Hello, hello, this is KMB Comer, and welcome to episode 42 of KMB Comer Plays Minecraft. And to start off this episode, I am killing more withers. I have enough skulls to kill four more. Um, but don't worry, before you turn it off, I'm doing it in a, in a completely different way today. Uh, this is something that I saw in, uh, in some JL server tour type stuff, and uh, Panda um, made a video about this. So, uh, yeah, we're using the bedrock in the nether to kill this wither. So, um, he was even so kind, Panda, to provide a list of coordinates where we can do this. So, uh, this happens to be a spot right here. So, the basic idea is that, um, let's see, one, two, three, we, uh, we build our wither right here. Uh, so, it'll be like so. And then, um, we have a piston with a lever on there. And, uh, so we spawn him there. And as soon as he starts to spawn, we use the piston to push him up. And uh, we got this nice 3x3 three three bedrock area with an air gap above it. So uh, basically, as soon as he starts to spawn, we shove him into the bedrock. And then he's stuck there, and he can't move, but he's not suffocating. And this makes it just really, really easy to kill them. So uh, let's do it. It, sh it should be really quick um can't place it on the ceiling into the ceiling and of course a sticky piston isn't necessary there but that's what i had available and we'll block the explosion shouldn't hurt too much okay and then we just go to town and got my great sword saw working so uh yeah really really easy <laughs> really fast so we'll just do that uh, four times here. It should be done real quick. I guess I'll record the whole thing. Why not? Oops, that ain't gonna do it. And, uh, yeah, so this is better than the iron golems. I mean, I have no shortage of iron, but that takes significantly more work than this does. Uh, <laughs> materials for this are very light. And, um, yeah, if you want to get, uh, the list of coordinates for places where you can set this up in your own world because as Panda explained in his video, a uh, little known fact that I didn't know until I saw it, the bedrock for every single world is the same on the ceiling. So this uh, messed up bedrock pattern does not change um, depending on your own seed. So. He has a huge tech, te uh, text list of coordinates that uh, I believe was compiled with some sort of uh, filter or something, I'm not exactly sure, but there's way too many on that list for it to have been compiled manually, so I'm going to assume it was done uh, with some sort of script or something. And uh, yeah, you can go look at his video at Panda4994, uh, I believe is his channel, so you can check that out. and. Um, yeah, take a look at his video. And, alright, so we got four more beacons just about ready to go once I kill this guy. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to uh, distribute strength across my base now. So, uh, why don't I get that going? And then I have a couple things to work on at the Calgary Tower. I think we can get those finished pretty quick. And then we'll uh, we'll move on. I think I I want to get to work on uh, Venice a little bit. So maybe we'll get to work on that a little bit later. But uh, until I get those beacons out, uh, I'm gonna cut here and I'll be back. All right, I got uh, full coverage strength two in my base now. <laughs> that's uh, four clusters. Whoops, that's the wrong way. Four clusters of four beacons each, and that is significant. <laughs> But it's not enough yet. I need the full five beacon coverage at every side. So, uh, yeah, that's next. But uh, I believe with this strength and uh, long claw, every mob down here should be a one shot. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's go take a quick test of that. Whoa, he wasn't. Okay, so not quite, but pretty close. 
I know you guys can't see anything right now, but uh, pretty cool. Uh, I really like it. Um, of course, some may argue that the one that I haven't put in yet, which is Regen, is uh, the most important of all, but um, yeah, I save, I don't know, best for last, I guess. Uh, but uh, this is great. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we got um, 16 beacons in the base here, plus I have one of my own out at the witch farm. And uh, yeah, I think there's one other beacon in existence on the server. So uh, 18 beacons on the server, and I got 17 of them. So... <laughs> I don't know, uh, I guess other people just don't value them as highly as I do, but, um, I can't get enough. I don't know if I could live without jump boost anymore, it's just, it's just too good. So yeah, we got, uh, it's hard to differentiate the beams, but we definitely got four in each corner. And, uh, yeah, so, that's that, and, uh, I'm gonna get to work on the Calgary Tower. I got a couple more redstone things to put in there and some general tidying, so uh, we'll get on that, and uh, I'll be back. Okay, I've made some progress here. I've been working on the front door to the Calgary Tower. We can get rid of that dirt bar going across, but uh, yeah, I'm just doing a 3x3 uh, three three, um, door, you know, pretty standard fare. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. They're all pretty similar, um, you know, I figure why reinvent the wheel when I can just um, use a design that's tried and true. So this one, you know, they all have some small variations. This one's from a channel called Redstone Innovation, so you guys can go check them out if you like this particular door, but, uh, you know, it's pretty standard. I'm just gonna, you know, trim it out, but uh, show you guys how how it functions, so closes up. And that's kind of the the design I've chosen. Iron blocks in the middle, uh, the slabs on the sides. I think it looks pretty good. Um, so yeah, we'll have floor at this level right here, and yeah, we'll we'll use uh, sandstone like that. Uh, I need to get some more of these. What are they called? <laughs> Nether brick. Yeah, and I might widen this out a little bit. Yeah, the three wide feels a little bit narrow, but it uh, looks pretty good, I think. And then, so you open it up, and it's just like that. Oh, hey, I somehow have broken it. <laughs> what did I do here? Um, hmm. There you go, it worked that time. What was wrong with it last time? Who knows? Okay, well, uh... Seems to be working. I like the way it looks. It's a cool door. Um, what did I just pick up? Egg. Ah, come on, come on. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna finish trimming this out. I'll do a little bit of landscaping out here, and then uh, we'll come back and see the final look of the front door for the tower. And then I got one more bit of redstone to put in the basement here, and then we will be very close to being completely done the Calgary Tower. So uh, I'll be back. Okay, I got it all trimmed out and beautiful, but uh, I want to show you something. <laughs> this guy's kind of freaking me out. He's way too smart. He, oh, where is he going? <laughs> he, ke he kept finding a way to climb that ladder, and uh, yeah. Hey, guy, you want to live up here? I guess that's okay. Um... Yeah, he didn't want to stay down in the basement, so I guess that's alright. Um, you know, every time I came over here, he had climbed this ladder and he was standing in this room, so <laughs> I guess that's fine if he, if he wants to live upstairs. Um, I'll just have to be careful not to let him out. Where did he go now? Oh, well, I guess this is a lot nicer than what you used to live in. Just don't fall and die, okay? Deal? Deal. Alright. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this is looking a lot nicer. Uh, I widened it. I got it the full seven blocks wide, lighting in the floor. And uh, it's pretty much completely done, this door here. So uh, I, I put on these side bits to force myself to um, go up the middle when I exit or enter so I don't um, 
miss activating the door, but we just got these pressure plates here. Bottom of the steps, they open it up, and then close just like that. So, uh, yeah, it works really nice. I like the door. I like the way it looks from the outside. Um, it's pretty good. I gotta do some some landscaping out here, of course, but uh, we got a doorway now. And <laughs> so finally, the tower is all closed up. And, uh, you know, it takes a little bit to open from this side to get through, but that's okay. I'll just close it up here, and uh, we can take a look. Oh, right here is where I should have been. And, uh, yeah, we could just take a look at the wiring. So, pressure plates above here. Oh, I don't need this anymore. That was for testing purposes. Uh, I'm full. Um, we'll just put this back. <laughs> And uh, I want to make sure that we got it well lit down here. Don't want anything spawning. Okay, so yeah, we got uh, pressure plates above there. Power comes down to this T flip flop here, which is one of these um, hopper ones. Pretty simple. Uh, I've used these a fair amount recently. Pretty handy. And uh, yeah, so that's that goes into there. And then I actually from here had to put it into a comparator, which I mean obviously that comes off the T flip flop. Um, but I had to put it into a torch underneath this uh, this activation block for the whole thing. What if, if I took the comparator and put it directly in, if I had it up here where this torch is, it didn't work, and I just really couldn't figure out why, so I just gave up and uh, put it down here into a torch. And then, of course, from the outside, we have uh, the wire running underneath here. Up like this, and uh, pressure plates are all along top of this cobble here. Down, and had to go underneath the uh, redstone block here, and up, and into the T-flip-flop. And then, of course, we have all the door mechanism here. So, uh, yeah, everything's working very well for this, and uh, I can hop out of there. Just takes a little bit of effort and get this closed back up and uh, where's our guest here I'm one I'm kind of wondering where he's gonna prefer to hang out now uh, let's see I mean there's no house in here at all there's nothing in here that counts as a house so geez I don't know where he's gone to um, I suppose it's possible he went through the portal or down below. Anyways, uh, you see I put a hole in the floor here and that's because there's one more thing I wanted to put in here and that is an ender pearl station. So uh, basically what I'm going to have here is uh, it's something that people have done before. I kind of designed it myself and then found out that other people have come up with very very similar designs. So uh, yeah, it'll be located right here. Hit a button and you'll get ender pearls popping out of the floor. 16 of them to be exact. And uh, yeah, we'll get working on that next. And I'm really curious where uh, where the villagers got into. Um, let's find them before I cut for the next part. Where are you, my friend? It's not over here. Uh, he's not anywhere that I can see. He can't purposely climb, can he? He wouldn't have come up here. Maybe? That would be something. Uh, I don't see him here anywhere. Oh, how did you get up here? Uh, whatever. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I'll, uh, I'll collect some materials for that next project, and I'll try to find our friend, but, uh, yeah, I'll be back. You sneaky guy. <laughs> well, here he is in the nether. Uh, I don't have the materials together, but I found him. He is way too smart for his own good. Um, he's probably going to get himself killed, but, uh, you know, he, sometimes you got to let a guy live his own life, so... Uh, you have fun. You're trapped in this uh, this area, but you enjoy yourself here in the Nether. 
I think you had it much better out there. Anyways, yeah, I'll be back, guys. Okay, I'm going to uh, update you guys as I go along with building this next part, but uh, this zombie, he is really interested in something down there, and, uh, well, I know what it is, so uh, I might as well just show you. Um, yeah, villager came back, and... Yeah, he came back through the portal. I hadn't even been in the nether. Uh, well, at least not close to here. I, I'm not sure how he got back through, but he did. And then uh, he was wandering around, and I just broke a hole in the floor and dropped him in here. <laughs> he should be safer here. I, actually, when I found him, he was... Uh, well, let's just get back over here. Uh... Yeah, I've been working down here in the basement, but uh, he was standing right here, and there was a zombie standing right here, stuck on this pane, trying to get him, and uh, I don't really know where the zombie came from. Um, as far as I can tell, there should not be any spawnable spaces in here anywhere. So, uh, that's a bit of a mystery to me, but, um, oh well, uh, <laughs> let's, let's move on. So I'm building the Ender Pearl Station, and it's going to be right down here, or, you know, part of it, uh, so what we have, ooh, hello, we have a dropper with, uh, Ender Pearls in it, and right now I've been working on the refilling mechanism, so, uh, how that's gonna work is, well, let's just take those, uh, so, let's see, I am going to be having, oh my god, I'm really full, uh, another button right here, and that will be the activating button to shoot the ender pearls out, and this one is the button for refilling, so it's pretty simple, you just hit it, chest hidden behind, drop them in there, and any second now, there we go, you should be seeing them getting in there, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty pretty simple, but uh, we can go take a look through here without... Oh, no, don't want to break that one. So, uh, button is here, sends power to here. We have a stair there, so it doesn't block the signal. Into a repeater, and uh, now we have trouble seeing because these stairs are in the way, but uh, we just have a monostable circuit, so we have... Uh, I don't think I can see it. Um, there we go. There's a... Uh, there is a piston there. A sticky piston monostable circuit. And um, that just leads into a block beside a piston that's back there. And so in that way we kind of uh, do... And let me put that full block back there. We just have a, a T flip flop effect with this sticky piston because it just gets a one tick pulse. So on one tick or one activation, it will pull the block back, and on the other, it'll leave it out. So that uh, pretty simple. And then of course, under the chest, we just have a hopper chain leading into the dropper so the next step will be to hooking up the or the next step will be to hook up the uh the redstone coming from over here so i can just break in here and uh yeah we can get to work on this side so uh actually i'm going to need to build the circuit that powers this whole thing whole thing so i think i'll get to work on that off camera and then uh yeah we'll be right back Alright, uh, little update. So this is the first part of the circuit done, and it's pretty simple. Um, on the other side of that block right there, we have the upward-facing dropper, and uh, we just have one of these comparator clocks. So we do that, and uh, we get it dispensing ender pearls. And this repeater here, uh, this is important because, well, let's take a look up here. Uh, it looks just at first glance like it's superfluous uh, like it doesn't do anything but it actually has a very important uh, task so we have our five 
ender pearls there and geez that is causing a lot of a lot of frame rate issues for me let me go turn that off Whew. okay so uh what that second repeater does is it locks the hopper behind this block here whenever the clock is running and uh why that's important is occasionally in my testing of this design because we're shooting these items upward through solid blocks occasionally I would have uh, one of the ender pearls kind of glitch sideways so there's a hopper right under here and I would uh, I would occasionally have one of the ender pearls glitch sideways as it came out of here and end up back in the uh, back in the hopper there so all that happens is that let's go let's go do this here you saw when I chopped that uh, those half slabs out they ended up back in the dropper if I chop them out now and throw stuff on there they won't end up uh, going into it because it's disabled so that keeps uh, keeps me from having the little issue I had in testing where I would sometimes only get 15 instead of 16 ender pearls so uh, yeah that's about half the circuit done it's a pretty simple circuit so uh, I'll get prepared to do the next part and uh, we back again okay well it's uh, pretty much functional now well it is functional uh, no ender pearls on me uh, I got it labeled up too uh, I used a hopper to denote the uh, the spot where you refill I guess that works I think yeah that'll work anyways uh, yeah no ender pearls on me stand here kind of in the middle I guess I could put maybe a different block there or something I don't know I uh, hit the button and they start dispensing out of the floor and 16 and then you want to refill Come over here throw that back in close her up and you can hit it again 16 perfect it's working just right and uh, there was just one more thing I wanted to add to this one more feature um, but before we get on to that we can come take a look behind here so button just runs down the back into this repeater and uh, I'm gonna have to pillar up here so we can see but uh, yeah it runs into this repeater and then we just have one of these simple uh, simple comparator looping into itself um, pulse extenders and this just so happens to be the uh, the exact amount of time you need to dispense 16 ender pearls uh, I believe it likely has something to do with the fact that these will lose um, one one redstone power per uh, tick I guess and uh, well per like comparator tick and since we're using a comparator clock that's running on the same kind of rules that these will lose these will start at 15 power and they'll lose one every uh, every cycle and that will dispense once every cycle so you have 15 dispenses plus a little bit extra from the button press so it just happens to work out that you get uh, 16 ender pearls out of there so that is all nice and good and uh, last thing I wanted to do is add an indicator for when the uh, the dropper there is getting empty so I'm trying to figure out kinda on the fly how I wanna do that ooh glitching you know with the ooh. oh come on pillaring up with um, slabs when you have jump boost it's a little bit interesting sometimes so uh, yeah what I wanted to do here is you can take a signal off a container with a comparator through a block so uh, for example whoops that's not gonna do it oh come on get it get it get it okay there so I'm taking a signal off of the um, the dropper there with this comparator 
So I'm trying to figure out, you know, what would be a good way to have an indicator light. Uh, I do think I want to... Ow, I think I'm lagging the server a little bit with... Uh, maybe it needs a restart. I'll have to check that after. But uh, I'm going to do something like... Ooh, do I have this stuff required? What happened to my levers? There's my levers on my bar. So if I, uh, if I put a <laughs> repeater there, yeah, that's what they're called, and a lever and turn that on. So now we are actually using a comparator to compare signals, and uh, it's looking for a full strength signal coming off of the dropper behind there before this will turn on. So because it's not completely full of ender pearls, it won't overpower this signal coming in from the side and uh, it will remain off. So uh, wherever I end up locating the indicator light, it will uh, turn off or on. I don't know, I'm going to have to figure out exactly what I want to do. But basically it will indicate whenever the uh, dropper isn't completely full, meaning uh, you know, I'll have, I can have this entire hopper chain full of ender pearls, and then, uh, they'll feed in over time as I use them up, and then this will indicate when we're down to just the supply that is in the dropper, and, uh, yeah, tell me that it's time to refill it. So I'm going to figure out how I want to do that. And then, I swear to God, we will move on from the Calgary Tower by the end of this episode. I know we're like, what, about 23, 24 minutes in? Something like that. Anyways, I'll get that done and we'll be back. Alright, uh, this project pretty much done here. Uh, just wrapping it up here, so I came off this side instead. You can see the comparator. Well, hopefully, you can see the comparator right back there coming off the block on this side. Uh, we got the repeater that is for some reason at an extra tick, no worries. Uh, actually, it doesn't make any difference at all. But uh, yeah, that comes off into this block. Uh, dust, repeater beside the torch so I don't power the line. All the way around to this torch here, and then that powers that block. There's a torch above that, and a lamp above that. Um, so, what that means is the lamp will be on when we have a good supply of ender pearls and off when we're running low and we can go fill it up now uh... yeah so let me just get rid of this scaffolding a little dark up there hey uh... yeah i'm getting a bit lazy with my uh... <laughs> with keeping things tidy in my uh... my building and stuff you know my wiring and hello why is that there I don't know, but uh, we'll get rid of it, and then, uh, yeah, so let's go test out that whole thing now, so I can close up my utility access, and, uh, okay, I put a lamp here just to balance out the look, but here is the indicator lamp here, uh, so we are a little short on ender pearls right now, I have some to reload it with, throw those in, close it up, and uh, not sure, <laughs> not sure how long this will take to uh, load up. Um, eh, it won't be too bad. We'll wait it out. And uh, yeah, so all in all, this place down here, this is pretty much done. Uh, last thing to do in the Calgary Tower is to get access up the entire tower. Uh, up the inside of the shaft um, so you know straight up I have the ladder started gotta clean up the inside of the top there and just build you know a little observation deck and I gotta put in uh, okay there we go lights on I gotta put in a nether portal at the top of the tower to um, yeah just provide access up there so lights on and we'll get a stack of uh, ender pearls right here. And yeah, so we we didn't have a huge supply, meaning that uh, it immediately went out. I think. Okay, yeah. So hmm, 
I'm just thinking now, the way I've wired this up, it will turn off any time uh, it's used. I guess that's alright. It's kind of an indicator that the system's in use and working properly, I guess. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe I'll change that. All I'd have to do really is to put the compare... What? That's weird. I think that's server lag. All I'd have to do to fix that is to put the comparator off one of the, um... One of the hoppers leading in, and I think I might do that, but, uh... Yeah, I'll just tell you guys that I'm gonna do it. I don't need to show you that, uh... That little part. So, uh... Yeah, Calgary Tower, I think we can just about check it off the list, but uh, there's a little bit more to do, so I'm going to keep working, and I'll get back to you. Well, guys, I just checked the uh, time on the episode, and I think I'm going to have to call it a day for today. I wish I could have finished. I really, really wanted to finish the tower here, but uh, just ran out of time. Uh... Next time for sure it'll be done and it'll be done early in the episode. There's not a lot left to do. We got all this fiddly redstone stuff done. Uh, I did change this up so it comes off one of the hoppers instead so that'll stay on when it's in use. And I uh, got my ender pearls. And yeah, uh, I hope this uh, these past couple episodes working in here show how you can um, you can take some you know simple redstone stuff um, you know a bunch of smaller components and combine them all together to make your place really nice and comfortable and uh, you know these are these are fairly simple projects and uh, yeah you should be able to uh, replicate them in your own world if you so desire I mean maybe you think these are kinda dumb but I like them and uh, yeah I hope you like them too so Thanks a lot for watching, and, uh, we'll see you next time. Aww.